So uh, this is session number eight on the topic we've been looking at on this lesson, identity versus function. And I want to begin at the last statement I said. Uh, t time tells me I wish I had time to do a little bit of a recap, but uh, we may not have time for that today. So I want to go back and pick a statement that we said last week and follow it through. A few things I thought it's important to clarify. Now, the true meaning of life, remember we said, we're talking about identity versus function. function. What's the difference? Because what you do is not what defines who you are. It is who you are that determines what you do. So identity determines function. It is not function that determines identity. identity. I, pro uh, I want to prosecute a very critical thought today, so I'll ask you to follow through closely. True meaning of life, its purpose, and fulfillment is tied to your true identity. In other words, in the identity is the purpose of life. Everyone say purpose. purpose. In the identity is fulfillment in life. Everyone say fulfillment. fulfillment. And identity is the rest, consequent rest in life. Everyone say rest. rest. Say purpose. purpose. Fulfillment. fulfillment. Rest. Okay? Now, purpose. Let's go again. Purpose. purpose. Let's say contentment. contentment. It's the same as fulfillment, isn't it? Yeah. And then rest. It comes as a package. When a man discovers who he is. Now, remember when I say man here, it is not uh, gender biased. Eh? It's, yeah. it's a human. When a man discovers who he is, his identity, in that identity is the purpose. In that identity is the contentment, the fulfillment, and the consequent rest. The reality is, if you don't know who you are, that's identity, then you don't know what you're intended to do. That's called purpose. Isn't it? Because you can't discover purpose before you discover identity. We talk a lot about purpose, and everyone's talking about purpose, and even those who are talking purpose, ask them what purpose is. They, we, we don't have a clear idea, isn't it? We are still trying to identify what is our purpose. It's because we begin from the top. We climb the tree from the top. Now, you first discover identity. You discover purpose. Because you can't discover purpose before you discover identity. identity. Okay? So if you are busy pursuing your dream and seemingly getting successful according to the standards of men. Okay? You are so busy. You're pursuing your dream, your, what you call your dream, or your vision, as you call it. If what you are actively involved in is not in line with your purpose, the purpose for your existence, my friend, you know very well, and you do know it, you don't have an inner fulfillment. You don't have, there's a sense of satisfaction you lack. Even though people think you are successful, you don't feel satisfied. Isn't it? You're not fulfilled. So you have, you have every material possessions that you dreamt of. You have the cars you dreamt of to drive and to spare. You have the houses you dreamt of, your homes and renting. You have the lands you dreamt of. You have the possession you dreamt of. You have the influence you dreamt of. But still, you don't have inner fulfillment. Does that happen? Yeah. yeah. Because that fulfillment, that inner fulfillment, does not come from things. Listen, fulfillment does not come from the things we do. Fulfillment does not come from the things we possess. Talk to me. Fulfillment can only come First, when you discover who you are, there's a, such a rest because you're no longer tossed to and fro. You, there's such a rest. Okay? So rest does not come from the things you possess, but from who we are. You rest when you know who you are, and then the execution of what we are designed to do, that's purpose. So when you discover your identity and your purpose, you get some rest. You enter into rest. I want you to note, my brothers and sisters, contentment is not an excitement, okay? 
It is not an excitement or a kind of happiness that is temporal. No, contentment is more like a peaceful ease. You are at ease that has a sense of peace within you. There's an inner sense of fulfillment and rest, which is inspired by a deep feeling of satisfaction and gratitude. That's contentment. So the bitter truth is that you can have tremendous social power and influence. That's called possession. You can accumulate enviable financial and material wealth. That's called possessions. But never have contentment. And the rest is history. Because you never find rest. So I'll ask you a question. Why do you have people who are so well endowed, empowered, but still can kill for something more? Right? You find this man has 100 acres, but he's after two acres from that old woman. Does that happen? Yes. Do you see those things here? Yeah. Or uh, those are stories? They happen. Yeah. Why so? Even if he gets the two acres, he will not be contented. Because there's something he's looking for. Every man is looking for something called identity. You find there is something you're, you're trying to define yourself by acquiring, by accumulating. You're never satisfied with what you have or what you get. Satisfaction will come when you discover who you are. Let me ask a question. Have you discovered how you feel a deep sense of fulfillment when you help somebody in response to an inner impression? Yeah. Does that happen? Why, why do you feel that kind of a, sense, uh, a fulfillment? When you just sense an impression, the Holy Spirit inspires you to go visit somebody, right? You go visit them and realize they had no food. And guess what? You had carried unga and skumawiki and uh, a half kilo of meat. Right? And, and that lady is crying as she's cooking this. What do you feel? What makes you feel that fulfilled? you suddenly realize that act satisfies you more than the car you drove in. Talk to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you go back to the big house that you own, what satisfies you in that house is what you did that afternoon. Right? That is because your act of obedience, what you have done, is consistent with your divine nature. That's called identity and purpose. Listen, the purpose of man, and I've said this again and again, God created man that man may represent him. That's the sole purpose. If what you're doing is not revealing God to men, if what you're doing is not glorifying God among men, are we together? If you, are, if, if you are not a good representation of God, then you cannot find fulfillment. So why do you feel more fulfilled in that manner? Because that's, that, that which you have done is consistent with your nature. Your nature is a son of God. Amen? A son of God. And the Bible says, wherever Jesus went, that's your nature. That's why you just do good, you feel fulfilled. You do good, you feel satisfied. There's a deeper sense of fulfillment in your spirit when you do good than when you acquire something. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the true meaning of life, its purpose and fulfillment therein is tied to your true identity. You need to discover who you really are. You are not that Meru woman or man. You are not that Kikui man or woman. You are not that challenge, you know, tighter. You are not that what you think you are. In fact, don't even think of yourself as a male or female. Rise up above all that natural definition of yourself and begin to see yourself as a son of God. Amen? That's how you find fulfillment. That's how you connect to the divine purpose. That's how you begin to fulfill the will of God when you discover who you are. So what's your identity? Son of God. I'm, I'm going to prove that shortly in the scriptures. So in your identity is your purpose, your contentment, and your rest. It comes as a 
package. Let's consider Genesis 1, verse 26 to 29. All right? You can read that, but I want to break it down bit by bit. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 29, when God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay? And then talks about, I let them have dominion. Isn't it? And verse 27, so God created man in his own image. After his own image, he created them, male and female. All right? Then verse 28, he says, be fruitful and multiply. And so on and so forth. Let's break down that in the light of the things we have talked identity purpose okay and fulfillment or contentment let's look at that verse 26 if you have your bible open with you verse 26 the first part says then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness now up to there that's called the divine intent everyone said divine intent divine. God expresses his intent, his intention. I want a product. So he makes his intention known. The product. I want a product and he defines the kind of the product he wants. Isn't it? He says, I want a product and this product will be in my image and my likeness. Now, that which a man produces that has his image and likeness what is it called son so the product that god intends to bring forth is called what son son that's why is it luke chapter 1 verse what is it that between 36 going down there please check that for me where it talks of adam the son of god so the product that God made is what? Son of God. Listen, the product before in Genesis 1 is a son of God. Then when Jesus comes, God is after the same product again. And what is this product? Son of God. Son of God. As you go on with this series, I'll be, I'll be looking with you some different things in the scriptures and, and validating and proving to you most of the things we think are our identity are action, actually our function. Are we together? They are functions. Your identity is not a Christian. That is a definition of your faith. Your identity is not a disciple. That's a definition of your following. One who follows. Are we together? Your identity is not ambassador. Right? That's a function. Your identity is son of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. As you must have the confidence to say it. I'm a son of God. That's who I am. Yeah. Remember we said, identity is what? Nature. Quality. Characteristics that define a person. So what is your nature once you're redeemed in Christ? The Bible says you're a partaker of the divine nature. Isn't it? Divine nature. Divine qualities, divine characteristics, divine function. That is a God-like man. Let us create man in our image. That's a divine intent. Luke 3, 38. Luke 3, yes, 38. Not 1, but 3. Luke 3, 38. You find there Adam, the son of God. So when God is saying, let us create man. In our image, after our likeness, that's a divine intent. Verse 27. 27 says, so God created man. Is it in the Bible? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. In the image of God. He created him. We know that man is Adam, isn't it? Yes. That the him is Adam. Okay? And by the way, I hope you are, and I've explained this to you, that, uh, that, that man in Hebrew is plural. Okay? That's why it says male and female. He created them. So the, the word man there is plural. Let's create man. The word man is in Hebrew means mankind. Okay? It's mankind. It's mankind. Adam, by the way, is not, doesn't mean a, male, a boy name. When you call him Adam, doesn't mean a boy name. No. Adam simply means one who is from the soil. Okay? So we, we need to be clear on that. 
I, I always like saying that because we, we like treating women like that. It's a, they are an afterthought. No. No, no. A woman is not an afterthought. When a woman comes in the picture, it is God now who created this male and female. And at this point, they're like seamless twins. God separates the two. And then for purposes of order, he had put the man in the garden before. Are we together? Every lady say, I am not an afterthought. I am not an afterthought. You believe it? Yes. Say, I'm a son of God. I am a son of God. I was conceived in the divine intent. I was conceived in the divine intent. In the original divine intent. In the original divine intent. I existed. I existed. I'm not an afterthought. I'm not an afterthought. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't worry, man. You are not afterthoughts either. <laughs> All right? So listen. What he says in, in his image, and I took time to take you through the, 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 the meaning of the word image and likeness. We can't go back now. But that image and likeness carries the idea of what? Nature, qualities, characteristics. So he's saying, let us create man in our nature. Let us create man with our qualities. Let us create man with our characteristics. Isn't it? Let us create a man who can function like us. In other words, it's a godlike man. Are we together? It's a godlike man. That's called divine identity. There's the divine intent, verse 26. <coughs> then we see divine identity in verse 27. A godlike being. That being is called Son of God. Hallelujah. That's why Paul Peter clarifies and tells you you are a partaker of the divine nature divine nature. Have you asked yourself how you pray and things happen? Genesis chapter 1. How does God create? By his word. He speaks. How do you create? By words. We're together. You don't believe it? Let me just give a simple example. I, I find a girl. I was in a crusade. Open air meeting. Okay? And then there is an open air meeting. We are in the same cruise, whatever. We are in the songs are going on. Okay, and I stand and I hear this girl singing. And I stand and I say, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I say, that girl. Remember the song she was singing? Yes. The song was, Choose Who You Will Serve This Day. Chagwen Yulam Takam to Mikia. Ila Mimi na Nimbayangu. But as for me and my, I just said I'm part of that house. <laughs> that house. I'll be the head of that house. I'll be the leader in that house. We're together. And I began saying hi and what have you. Then one day I gave a word. I gave a word. A word. And that word created a family. If you never knew, man lives by the word. Man rules by the word. Man governs by the word. Man operates by the word. Man forms by the word. Man creates by the word. That's why you must be careful with the words you speak. Amen? Because when you speak, you create. Now, that's God-like. That is what? God-like. That power to speak and things happen. Now, listen. When I lay hands on you and bless you, you believe you are blessed. And something is manifested in your life. That's God-like. Praise the Lord. That's God-like. You just have someone, tell them you love them. They begin to cry. Just say, I love you. They begin to cry. Right? So you wonder, what have I said? What, what has happened? Because by saying I love you, there is an impartation that has taken place of something called love, which is the nature of God. Are we together? I want you to appreciate the power that works in you as a son of God. And stop speaking things casually and carelessly. And to understand, listen, to understand your power is tied to your identity. Are we together? It's tied to your identity. He's a God-like being. He's a son of God. He is created that way. Verse 26b. What does God say? Let them have dominion. dominion. You remember, let's create man after our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion. 
he begins to bring in what you call the divine purpose. He says, I want a product, divine intent. The product will be in my nature and my image. Okay? That divine identity. The purpose of the product is dominion. He justifies, I mean, he qualifies that again, rather, uh, affirms that in verse 28. When God blessed man, he says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have what? Dominion. Have dominion. Have dominion. As a divine purpose. Dominion, ladies and gentlemen, now please follow me here. Dominion does not mean control. God did not tell you to control others. And the Bible says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle. Are we together? God did not give man dominion over man. God did not give man dominion over man. And that's why you hate to be told. Especially when you now you grow up. You know you don't like being told, isn't it? Eh, but, but you like telling. Yeah. You don't like being told, but you like? It's a dominion thing here. Dominion actually carries the idea of governance and management. Are you together? Yeah. Governance and manage, rulership. Rulership, governance, providing a direction. Governance carries the idea of making decisions. Are you together? Making decisions, management, executing of those decisions, management, stewardship. So when we talk about dominion, it's a principle of stewardship. Principle of stewardship. But he says something else there. Be fruitful and multiply. That's called con for continuity. And so God created this man, gave him an identity and a purpose. And the purpose is governance, management, and continuity. And co every son of God must ensure there is continuity. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Ensure the continuity of God's purpose. The continuity of God's agenda. Be fruitful and multiply. Ensure there is continuity. And I'm going to tell you this, brothers and sisters. When you are employed, don't let that office fail in your hands. If it must fail, let it fail in the hands of another, but not in your hands. As long as you are there, ensure what? Continuity. Be a good steward. Be a good manager. You are a son of God. Ensure there is continuity. Ensure there is the kingdom of God is revealed there. The glory of God is revealed. Amen. You are a son of God. And sure the father is manifested there. You are a son of God. Remember. Dominion. And I think I did a study with you on that. that, that the word dominion in Hebrew. Carries the idea of deputizing. You remember that one? Yes. To deputize. Yes. To deputize means what? To stand in the place of. To stand on behalf of. Are we together? To represent another. Are we together? So God created you and in your identity gave you an assignment because of your identity. He gave you an assignment to deputize him. So when you walk in, they should feel the presence of God because you stand in his name. Amen. So I come in in the name of the Lord. When I go in, I have come in his name. I represent him. I stand in in his behalf. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Someone has said something here seditious. Can I? Can I? Yes. When you are there, they should not be looking for God. You should show them God. They should have the confidence. Ah, he has come. She has come. We are sorted. God's representative is here. Amen. Hallelujah. That's deputizing. And so to represent him well, to deputize, to have this dominion, where your purpose is, my friend, to have dominion, you must have harmony with him. Amen? You must have harmony with the Father. 
the son cannot effectively represent the father if there is no harmony. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you know and you are conscious of your identity as a son of God. Watch me here. When you know and you are conscious of your identity as a son of God. And you have a good relationship with your heavenly father. You carry authority. You carry authority. authority. Now the authority of the father flows through you because you are his son. Amen. Amen. Because you are his son. Because you are his son. You carry his nature. You carry his image. You, you have his characteristics. Amen. It is in your nature to do good. And so you must begin to think in terms of continuity. In terms of management. In terms of deputizing God. But here, listen, when you get in that office, understand you are not employed to make money. Oh boy. You're not employed to make money. You're employed, you're not even employed by the way. You are sent by God there. Okay? You are sent to represent Him. But because they don't know that, they don't understand that, and they think in terms of money, they will remunerate you. But you as a son of God, rise above the salary. Rise above the money and begin to think kingdom. I am here to represent God. I am here to reveal God. I am a son of God. Amen. I report this morning as a son of God. What does a son do? Represent his father. So the way I talk today, the way I walk today, the principles with which I operate must reveal the heavenly father. That's your purpose. Amen. Amen. So when you go home in the evening and somebody looks back to you, at you, and you know, and, and, and just tells you, you know, today you have blessed my heart. How do you feel going home? Right? Yeah. And they didn't pay you that day. But you go back feeling so fulfilled. Yeah. You didn't get a pay. You didn't get a pay. If you cannot silence that selfish voice within you, you don't understand dominion. Dominion is not telling you, well, well, stand up. They stand. Stand No. It's the ability to subdue the selfish voice within you. The greed in you. We're together. When you can silence the greed in you and do somebody good. When you can silence the selfishness in you and do another one good. When you can silence the anger within you and bless another person. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. That's called dominion. Amen. Amen. So let them have. So please, I don't want you to walk thinking dominion is controlling other people. No. Dominion has to do with representing God. Doing God's will. Are we together? Bringing the kingdom of God where you are. Bringing the rule of God where you are. Jesus said what? Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in. Yes. When the will of God is done through your life, you are exercising dominion. Dominion has got to do with you executing the will of God in your space. When you bring God's will in your space, when you fulfill God's will in your space, when you do God's will where you are, that's called what? Dominion. Because you have brought the kingdom of God. You have deputized God. You have stood in the place of God and done what God would have done. Jesus did not become President Jesus. Did he? No. no. He never took any political position. Never became any political leader. But he had dominion. How did Jesus have dominion? By healing the sick. Talk to me. By feeding the poor. Amen. Amen. By, by doing what? Raising the dead. By clothing the naked. Blessing children, feeding the hungry. That's how he brought the kingdom of God. Have you ever thought that is dominion? No. We only thought that is what? Miracles. That's how the kingdom of God came. He says the kingdom of God is here. That's him now. And he brings the kingdom, the rule of God. And he began to do on earth what God wanted done on earth. He demonstrated how the son of God should live. Amen. Amen. And even on the cross, 
the very people crucifying testified of a truth. He was the son of God. They saw his God in life and in death. Hallelujah. That's your purpose, my friends. That's your purpose. You see, you see the connection of purpose and identity? Yes. And you see how it brings fulfillment? Yes. Now, verse 27. 27. Then God blessed them and saved them. Then God did what? Bless. Bless them. That's called divine empowerment. Divine empowerment. Is it 28? Yes. No, 27. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be free and multiply. That, that's verse 20 what? 28. Eh? Yeah. Then God did what? Bless. bless them. Then God blessed them. To bless is to empower. So that's called divine empowerment. I want you to see the progression. We are talking about divine intent, then divine identity, then divine purpose. The next thing is what? Divine empowerment. Empowerment. He empowered them to fulfill their purpose. A blessing is a spiritual empowerment. It's a spiritual resource. It's an enabling. He gave them a word that enabled them. So God blessed them and God said, blessings are words spoken. Blessings are not things. Blessings are not? Blessings are words spoken. Blessings are spiritual words that propel you towards progress and success. Can I hear an amen? amen. You got that one? Yeah. Blessings are what? Spiritual words spoken that do what? Propel you towards progress, increase, advancement. Words spoken, words of goodwill that empower you, that energize you, that propel you towards progress and success. A blessing is a spiritual resource, brothers and sisters. So when a word is spoken and the word manifests in your life as something physical, that physical thing is not the blessing, but it's a manifestation of the blessing. The blessing is the word spoken. Listen, how does God solve your matters? By giving you a word. When you're in a crisis, what do you tell God? Give me a word. Oh Lord, speak to me. Why do you say speak to me? Because you want a word. And you know that that word, if you act on it, you have the solution. By the way, listen. When God gives you a word, that word is the solution, but you still don't have a solution. Get my language. God speaks to you a word, that word is what? The solution. But you don't have a solution until you act on the word. Until you act Ah, that's why I keep telling us, see, God told me, see, God said to me, how come I'm now suffering and God said to me? Yeah, he said, but you haven't acted on the word. You haven't done anything. Talk to me. How many of your parents, what about me? Your parents, what about me? Your child comes in and tells you, I am hungry, right? Yes. Then you give them a word. Go, there is food in the fridge or there is food, whatever, isn't it? What have you given them? A word. That word is the solution. But are they full? No. They still are? Until they act on that word. Talk to me. Yeah. yeah. That's why you are here struggling and telling us you have a word. It's okay you have a word. Even the hungry boy has a word. Even the hungry boy has, no. has a word. Listen, this gospel of telling people, if God did it for me, he can do it for you. My friend, it is not very accurate. It is not very accurate. What we don't say is, when God gave me a word, I acted on it. I have the solution. You too, if he gives you a word, you act on it, you'll have a solution. Can I hear an amen? amen. Yeah. So God responds by a word. That word is the solution. That word is the blessing. Talk to me. That what is there? Blessing. When you read the Bible and a certain verse jumps out, that is God's word to you. Act on it. That's what the solution is. That's the blessing. That's the empowerment. 
Amen? Amen. You can keep singing forever, I am blessed, and remain in the same place. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every moment of my life, I am blessed. Ah, come on now. As I wake up in the morning, when I lay my head to sleep, I am blessed. I am blessed. You can sing that song and remain in the same place. Broke, painful, hurting, offended, and begin questioning God. Why? And that's why I begin asking God, how come God, that one was born after me, now see. If truly God, you have no favorism. If you have no favorism. Oh, yes. You know how we, we agree with God? And how we want to prove him he's not accurate? If you have no favorism. How come? This girl was born the other day. Now see her. This, yeah, how come? How come? I will tell you how come. Both of you heard the word. But she acted on the word. He acted on the word. And unlocked the grace, the blessing, the favor, the solution in the word. Amen? Amen. Yeah. That's divine empowerment. That's divine what? Empowerment. So don't go running to buy miracles. You have a word. Act on that word and see the miracle unlock in your life. Amen. See, the, experience it yourself. It will be more real, Sarah. Experience it yourself by just acting on the word. Hallelujah. Amen. But now here, when I'm telling you to bring a seed of 310, you bring it quickly because you want things, fast, fast things to be done. Right? Like somebody said, why are you buying what Jesus has already given you freely? The word is here. Amen. Amen. If you give, give because you are grateful the word has worked. Give as a worship. Don't give to buy. Oh, yes. Divine empowerment. So when you say, I am blessed, you are saying, I am divinely empowered. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many are blessed here today? You believe you are blessed? Yes. Meaning what? You are empowered to stand. You are empowered to excel. You are empowered to progress. You are empowered to succeed. You are empowered to prosper. You are empowered. Yes. But listen, you are empowered to act on the word. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 29. We have to finish these verses. Verse 29. It says, it says what? And God said, see, ah, I like this one. See, I have given you, now who is he talking to here? His son. Remember he's his son. The one who is, has the divine purpose, the one who has the divine empowerment is the son. We're together. He says identity. And so he says here something purple. See, I, father, have given you, son, every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you, son, it shall be for food. That's called divine maintenance. Now that word maintenance is bigger because it includes supply, sustenance, provision, security. In other words, God is saying, I have maintained you for life. You're my son, I've maintained you. I created, I took care, I prepared the environment. My friend, you have to come to a point and believe because of who you are, a son of God. Father has got you. Yeah. Father has got you. He's already provided. He's already supplied for us. Amen? You've got to believe that. You've got to believe that. Yeah? He is divine maintenance. He's supplied. Now, I wanted to observe something here. The first thing, I find this very interesting, the first thing that God supplied to this man is his food. Yeah, the first instruction is what to eat, what not to eat. God takes care of food, isn't it? But that's what we think. I want to prove to you today, the first provision that God gave was a provision of relationships. When God created man, he created him how? Male and Female. what is that? Male. That's a relationship. 
male and female. That's relationship. The second thing is now maintenance. What you shall eat, supply, divine provision. And then now God decides, now let me give this man work to do, and then let me give him a woman. Relationship. Listen to me, my friend. To sustain you, to supply to you, to provide to you, to make you secure, to maintain you, God has provided to you relationships. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Relationships and the sustenance for life. Amen. There's no glory in being hungry. And there's no glory in being isolated. By the way, you know me as you see me, I don't talk to people. Me, I'm not even very friendly. By the way, me as you see me, I don't visit people. Yeah. As you see me, I don't have the grace to visit people. I don't visit people. I don't call people. As you see me, by the way, me, I'm just, me, I just stay alone. And imagine I'm okay. You're not okay. That's why you're telling me about it. If you're okay, you won't be telling, talking to me about it. Are we together? Yeah. And you complain if we don't visit you. You don't visit people, and you're proud about it, but you're complaining when we don't visit you. Because you need people. Listen, my friend. For maintenance, God gives you relationships and all other provisions. Are we together, my friends? Look at your neighbor, tell them, don't take relationships lightly. Don't take relationships lightly. Hallelujah. So we have divine intent, divine identity, divine empowerment, divine purpose, and then divine maintenance. I ask a question. Why is God doing all this? Because he's dealing with a son. Because he's dealing with a son. a son. That's what I'm telling you. The moment you know who you are as a son of God, you rest. Because you know I have a purpose. Are we together? And listen, you stop struggling to look for the purpose. Listen, your purpose is not singing. I like that we have all these things that, that... And that's why we are competing forever. Because you think your purpose is singing, and she thinks her purpose is still singing, and she thinks her purpose is singing, the three of you compete who can sing better. So that you can outshine each other. Yeah, whose purpose is more effective. All of you are canon. If you are competing. We're together. Yeah. Your purpose is to represent God. And you can represent him in singing, in giving, my purpose is not preaching. It's a way of representing God. It's a means. So what you do is a means to fulfilling the purpose. Can I hear an amen? amen. What you do, say after me, what I do, what I do is my God-given means, God means to fulfill his purpose. And what is his purpose? To reveal him. To represent him. To make him known. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To bring him glory. God is at the center of this thing we call purpose. That's why we, that's why we are called, we pre, com, preachers will compete. Well, by the way, how many are you now in your church? Hey, yeah, yeah okay. So how, how much is offering every Sunday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the other day? No, those are small talks. Senseless talks. They don't add value to anyone. They don't add value to anyone. We have the greater purpose in life to reveal the Father. Can I hear an amen? amen? Those of you who are parents again here, what do you long for the most in your son or in your daughter? For them to walk in your ways or for them to have buildings? If your son is a crook, wicked, rotten boy, rotten girl, right? You know, he, he is known for everything wicked, right? But he drives the best of cars. And as the best of houses, why are you shaking your hand? You don't want that now. You don't want your children to have those big, big things. Big houses, big whatever. That's what should give you glory. Don't care how they live. No. Yeah. Let your boy rape some girls. Don't, don't worry about that. What's the problem? Yeah. 
Let your God be the chief prostitute. It's okay. He shares, is that what you want? No. What gives you glory? When your child walks in your ways. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And parents and other people come and tell you, your boy is well behaved. Mm. Your girl. How do you feel? Because yeah. they're working in your steps. Yeah. So what makes you think that what God is looking for is for you to have a car and a house and a husband and a wife and children it's beyond that my friend his glory is in you walking in his ways you walking in his nature character living a life that agrees with his nature hallelujah Amen. living a life that is consistent with his with your identity as a son of god the knowledge of one's true identity the knowledge of a clear one's clear purpose for life the knowledge of the sufficient empowerment that you have in life. The knowledge that you have endless supply of provision for your own preservation in life will give you security, contentment, and rest. Amen? Amen. When you know your identity, I'm a son of God. When you know your purpose, I am here to glorify my father. I represent God wherever I am. My purpose is to reveal my father, to show forth his praises. Hallelujah. I am blessed. I'm empowered to do this assignment. I'm empowered to reveal him. I'm empowered to represent him. Amen. Amen. I have endless supply from my father. My father takes care of me. He gives me the relationships I need and the provisions I need. That knowledge, that understanding by revelation will give you rest in life. It will give you contentment in life and make you secure. And from then on, you no longer compete with people. Can I hear an amen? amen? You no longer compete with? People. With people. Why? Because you know who you are. You understand the purpose that is connected to your identity. You understand the empowerment connected to your identity. And you understand the preservation connected to your identity. Because listen, your purpose, your empowerment, your supply is all connected to your identity. I wrap it up by asking you this. You who is a parent here, why do you take your boy to school? Why do you take your child to school? Your girl, your boy, why? Why do you take your child to school? That's your children in school. You don't know why you took them to school. All right? Why do you take your child to school? To be educated, another one? Why do you take your child to school? To get knowledge, another one, why did you get out of school? Huh? To learn? Yeah. I submit to you that that's not the reason. You're all wrong. To interact with society? I, I submit to you all that is wrong. You take them to school because they are your child. Because you start thinking, this is my child needs to go to school. Mm. You don't think about knowledge at that time? Am I right? Am I right? At that time, you don't think about knowledge or degree or job or profession. You just think, my child needs to go to school. You say something? Right? Am I right? At that time, what is in your mind? My child needs to go to school. My child. Yeah. My then you look at and say, my child needs a shoe. My child needs a shoe. My? Yeah. Right? I want my daughter to go to university. Which one? Not in Orero. You don't want them to go to in Orero. <laughs> because they're your child. What do you want your child to go? Strathmore, Daystar, USIU. Why are you thinking that way? Why are you thinking those good things? Because they are your child. child. Talk to me. Yeah. You go somewhere, you see a good spot shoe, and what do you think? You think about meeting their need because they are your child. So what is motivating your every action? They are your child. 
My friend, what makes you think that father will forget you? If you understand that you are his son, then he will know whatever he is doing, wherever he is, he is thinking about me. Amen. That's why he says you are the apple of his eye. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. He says you are the apple of his eye. So he thinks about you because you are his son. So what does he decide? He says, this my son will reveal me. This my son must have enough food. This my son must have relationships. This my son must have some work to do. This my son. God thinks of you in terms of his son. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's a sacrifice we make. It's a, it's a spiritual sacrifice and a spiritual discipline. Are we together? And the play, prayer has its place. But if God were to treat all of us based on prayer, some of us would have a rough time. Because some of you now, I tell you to pray. Some of us will be praying for one hour. In about three minutes, you are done. <laughs> some of you, isn't it? Yeah. Some of you, in three minutes, you will be done. But I ask you a question. How many of you have children who are noisy and very talkative in the house? Yeah. Uh-huh. How many of you have children who are just quiet? They, they, just quiet, just quiet, just quiet. Yeah. Those, I, so are you telling me the noisy ones are the ones you attend to, and the quiet ones you don't. No. no. The only difference is the noisy ones know you more because they make you talk to them more. So a prayerful one has a better knowledge of the Father. But I want you to know Father attends to both because they are his sons. Hallelujah. Yeah. He loves you because you are his son. Yeah. He takes care of you because you are his son. He attends to you because you are his son. Never separate your purpose from sonship. Never separate your provision from sonship. Never separate your empowerment from sonship. He has blessed you as a son. Empowered you as a son. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You see the place of identity? If you don't understand you're a son, my friend, you will work overtime. Trying to provide for yourself and take care of yourself. And because you don't succeed, you will rob you will kill. And I, like I told you, that's why when you keep praying about the prayer of corruption, that God destroy corruption in our country, that may not work. He hates corruption, yes. But then that man, this one doesn't know God. Her nature is bent towards corruption. We're together. To change her from corruption, we have to change her nature. Become a son of God. Whose nature hates corruption. You understand? So if a man does not know his nature, he cannot find rest in life. He is always on the run. May the Lord give you understanding in these things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. This product, the God-like man, the Son of God, cannot find fulfillment outside his source. Man cannot find contentment and rest without God. Amen? And listen, the more you know God, the more you discover who you are, the more you discover yourself. And the more you discover yourself, the more you find rest and contentment in life. You want to come to a place of contentment and rest in life? Seek to know Him more. And when you discover Him, you discover who you are. I want you to notice this as we conclude. Notice that all these things are originating from God. The idea of a product is from? The identity of the product is from? The purpose of the product is from? The empowerment of the product is from? And the maintenance of the product is by? God himself. The purpose, the idea, the purpose, the empowerment, the maintenance of the product is tied to the identity of the product. And that identity is son. Identity is? choose to live your life in a manner that is consistent with your identity son of the living God